To me, I think the most exciting thing on the horizon that is likely to happen that's different from what one is seeing in India, but is starting to see very much overseas, is the, is the likelihood of medical breakthroughs because, again, because of startups in, in uh, computing and in writing algorithms for analytics, basically. Uh, because of imaging and resolution that makes you see things that you couldn't see earlier. Uh, the whole area of biotechnology and markers, etc. So I, I see, and, and of course, life sciences and stem cells and things of that same. So I see a great deal of uh, breakthroughs in treating uh, diseases which hitherto were fatal or or uh, had no cure, and I think that's going to be worldwide in this decade. Some of the things that's going to change our mind will lead to lead to a set of new new technologies that are there. That doesn't mean that everything that we're seeing around us here is going to be obsoleted, not, not at all, because the opportunity of reaching a population the size of ours that has been deprived of reach, uh, I think is going to be a huge opportunity, not only in India, but probably in Africa and African countries, and in some developed countries too, because not everything that is developed here is for underdeveloped countries also it has impact in other places in the world thank you sir how many of you here are in the health tech space just to give sir a feel for in the health space sir lb prasad institute innovation center head is here sir they do fantastic work in eye care uh, so the dr sangwan is the health the head of the innovation center there yes, sir. okay i would like some women please uh, a question anybody any of the women in the room yes Uh, my name is Arpita and I run a startup in the student space called YoGrad. We've been working with students and startups for the last five years and we believe that be it innovation or entrepreneurship, students will be the future of our country. So if you have one message that we could pass on to our students, what would that be? One message for the students, what would that be, sir, if you had to give a message for students? Can I cheat and do three words? <laughs> <laughs> I think the, what my message would be, make a difference. Absolutely, sir. I think especially in this whole uh, era of just everybody becoming cookie cutter engineers, I think that's a powerful message. Somebody on this side, please. So, shall I? Yeah. Hello, sir. My name is uh, Vamshi Upalapati. So, my startup is Luxa, and it has been selected by Aditya Birla as one of the emerging startups. So, I work on artificial intelligence and uh, virtual reality. So that's my back end. Uh, so fashion is my front end. So my question, uh, one is personal and one is professional. Yes, two. So the reason behind acquisition of Jaguar and Range Rover, so that was my, that's the reason I'm here, the question. And the second thing is that, so you are a conglomerate, Tata is a conglomerate. If we are working on a couple of startups, and what is your mantra, how we can work it out both professionally, successful. Thank you, sir.
manage many things simultaneously. If you're referring to Jaguar and Land Rover, so the first yeah. question, the reason for acquisition. In in terms of the second part, Jaguar and Land Rover were not startups. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's two independent questions. He's asking, what was the reason for acquiring Jaguar and Land Rover? Actually, we, we were approached by Ford that they were wanting to sell the companies. We argued for about a year. I, I was interested in the Land Rover part, but not, I didn't know what to do with the Jaguar part. <laughs> uh, you couldn't bring the company to India. It wouldn't be the same company. Um, it was a company that a big car company had not succeeded in making profitable. So it was, again, intuitive that, that you wanted to increase its model range while the, while the market was, uh, was down. But on the second part of the question... Uh, how can you ma manage two startups at the same time? I think you, I think you can. Uh, Two startups at the same time. Not you can you can manage several hundred companies at the same time. He managed three hundred companies at the same time. <laughs> startups startups are different. In some ways easier. In some ways much more difficult. Yes, sir. Thank you. My name is Dhruv Joshi. I work at the LV Prasad I Institute's Innovation Center. And uh, the thing is, we work on a lot of hardware products for healthcare. And now it seems like only apps and software related things are gaining a lot of attention of you know VCs and potential people because maybe it's scalable or whatever. It's the best way to make a quick buck. What advice do you have for hardware related startups or scenes like us where we are building, we are taking on the tough challenges in healthcare which require you know fundamental things like infrastructure and hardware? Uh, I, don't, I don't have a ready answer for you. Most of my life has been in hardware. Uh, in, in fact, uh, for me, the, the, the world of uh, machining, the world of forging, the world of cutting and, and uh, forming materials and mechanisms has been my life. And it will continue to be that in the world to come because hardware is going to be the implementer of, of software. It has to be somewhere or the other convert to a mechanical or a chemical form which will involve some degree of hardware. The, we, we all uh, marvel at the iPhone, but we forget the intricacies that are embodied in in the article itself in the in the handphone. It's uh, we forget the the resolution of the screen. We we forget the thinness of the product, etc. So hardware is always going to be there. It's new processes, 3D printing.